Welcome to Night Hacking. We are here uh, today at uh, Jack's conference. And uh, my name is Yolande Poirier. And my guest today is Simon Bordet. Bordet. Hi. I wasn't, hi. I wasn't sure to pronounce it in French in uh, <laughs> which language. So that's why is it. Well, it's OK. <laughs> the, the French pronunciation and the Italian pronunciation with the T at the end, is, is they're both it's fine. OK, good. That's good. Yeah. So you had a session uh, today? I will have a session in a couple of hours. I'll be talking about HTTP 2 and uh, what changed in the Java ecosystem related to HTTP 2. So. so you did, um, you you actually talk a little bit about H HTTP 1 and then the difference also with HTTP 2. So what was really the, the exactly. big... Uh, so uh, the the story is, uh, is very simple. HTTP 1 was a protocol that was designed 20 years ago. And um, the web has evolved since then. And uh, HTTP 1 is now forcing developers of web application to actually work around the limitations of the protocol. And so HTTP 2 was designed with all this uh, new things that happened on the web over the past 20 years. And um, since it's been designed with these goals in mind to make the, the web better and faster and more efficient, then uh, it is, of course, a much better protocol uh, for today's web. So. It is, you know, a normal evolution of a protocol, only that for the web, it took 20 years to actually happen. But it's finally happening, and uh, the, the benefits are really big. So I'm, you know, hoping to present these uh, sessions and um, convince people that HTTP2 is a very good choice and something that they have to go and, and at least explore uh, at the beginning and then possibly embrace it as soon as possible. So what are the, the key, I mean, like you, the, your favorite fe feature actually in, the, in this new protocol? There are two main features of the HTTP2 protocols that are really outstanding. Um, the first one is called uh, multiplexing. Uh, it's a technical thing, but basically HTTP1 only allowed uh, a limited number of requests to be made in parallel to a certain domain, so to a mm -hmm. certain website. Uh, depending on the browser implementation, this was uh, four, six, or eight only requests concurrent. The problem is that an average web page today has something like between 80 and 100 or more resources to be downloaded. Hmm. And if you, if you only employ six connections, you have to make six requests and then wait for them to come back and then make another six requests and then wait for them to come back, which is very inefficient. By the time you have downloaded 100 resources in this way, a lot of time has passed and right. users are very sensitive to page rendering times. And so your sure. site is going to be going to look slow, uh, even if it's not your fault as a developer. It's just a protocol fault. It's, it's the protocol that is old. So multiplexing, what it does is basically lets you open a single connection to a single domain and then allows you to send as many requests as you want in that particular same connection. So you can have like all the hundred requests that you need to make being sent over the network almost at the same time and be returned in, you know, in, uh, depending on the server, how it processes them. But basically this makes the round trips that you have to make to retrieve right. the whole page much faster. So that's a huge benefit. And uh, I actually have a demo that I'm going to present that mm -hmm. shows this, and it's impressive. Wow. And it's really impressive. I mean, uh, it normally gets like the people stunned by, by the huge difference that this makes. So it is important. I mean, it's would you go into a car or use a car that is 20 years old? No, you no. want to be on a new shiny <laughs> car. So that's well, especially what the, it is. The, the speed of, uh, of internet, you're just exactly. looking for things, you make a mistake, you want to go back. I mean, it's, yeah, it's very frustrating. It's not about cars. Uh, would you, know. you use a computer that is 20 years old? That, yeah. No. You won't. No. So, exactly. Yeah. So. And I think also the younger generations are just, I mean, we are like still used to the, the, the slowness of, of, um, exactly. of internet, but I know that uh, Not young only people that, is... It's even <laughs> worse because there are a number of hacks mm -hmm. to work around the HTTP 1.1 protocol limitations that are now considered best practices. But mm. they're not really best practices. They're just hacks around the limitation 
they shouldn't be there in the first principle. So HP2 basically removes the limitation and makes the best practices completely useless because you don't need them if you have a new protocol and a new, which is designed nice. to be better. Yeah. So, so, um, so you talk also about uh, HTTP2 and, um, and Java 9. Yes. So, so what, um, what will be new then in, uh, with Java so 9? Uh, Java right now doesn't have a, an explicit support for HTTP2. It is possible with a certain amount of hackery to get it working, and that's what we do. But uh, Java 9 will have built-in support for uh, HTTP2. Um, in particular, it will have a new library, a new API uh, of an HTTP2 client that it's going to be used by developers to make HTTP2 requests to servers. So uh, the new API is currently under development. Um, we are discussing uh, and reviewing the implementation and, uh, and the API, the, the API and the implementation of this library. But um, it's a simple API that will get Java developers closer to HTTP2 and um, you know understanding how to use it and uh, be able to make requests with this new protocol and uh, get rid of HTTP1 uh, eventually. So it's, it's a good thing for developers. So any resources or things that you think that uh, people uh, should uh, definitely check? OK, so the, the current status of this API is that it is under uh, the implementation is under review. So it's not merged yet into the mainline JDK 9 uh, forest uh, mm -hmm, uh, for mm -hmm. the JDK project. However, it is probably going to soon be. And um, as soon as it lands, basically, developers will start using it. And, uh, and that's a good thing. And then by using it, they, of course, can report back their right. feedbacks and improve the API or maybe ask for uh, little features or uh, you know, make the implementation more stable by just exposing the implementation to multiple use cases. So um, I don't know exactly the times, because um, right. I'm, I'm uh, not yeah. in that particular group, but I'm heavily involved in reviewing the implementation. Because um, in Jetty, we, we had this implementation for more than, I think, one year and a half now. And so we have gathered experience about mm -hmm. uh, how to do things and, and, and how uh, people is actually, the, the Jetty community is actually using HTTP2. And so we can, you know, we're more than willing to share this experience with the OpenJDK guys and right. make this implementation really cool. So what about HT, uh, HTTP2? So do you have like resources or some things that, uh, that you think, I mean, maybe with tips on how to... Uh, to so the good thing about HTTP2 for web application developers is that they don't need to change their web application okay. in order to, to make it work with mm -hmm. HTTP2. They just need to deploy their existing web application as is into a, an HTTP2-enabled uh, server container. For example, Jetty, but also Tomcat 9 will have HTTP2 support. Uh, um, you know, Undertow from Red Hat or Netty. Or, I mean, there are a lot of projects that are already HTTP2-enabled. Uh, so that's, that's the good thing. The, um, on the other side, they need, HTTP2 requires uh, encryption. So one thing the developers, or especially the people that deploy web application, needs to know is that uh, their website now needs to be over uh, SSL, over TLS. And so they need to, for example, buy a certificate or use a certificate, not necessarily buy it, mm -hmm. because now there are entities that provide uh, uh, certificates for free. And so, um, but mm. it's one thing that you need to be aware of, uh, that HTTP2 is going to be uh, deployed in an encrypted way. So um, it's an important thing to remember. Other than that, uh, JDK 9, as I said, will bring the capability for developers to make HTTP2 requests. And um, servers are already up to date. Uh, as I said, okay. Jerry, Tomcat 9, Undertow, Netty, uh, there are a number of them that already support HTTP2. So HTTP2 is already here. OK, so it will be easy then for, for Absolutely. developers. Absolutely. Well, that's good to know. Yep. That's uh, not every day that we hear that, right? Yeah, yeah. It just needs a little bit of, of awareness right. that HTTP2 is there, that it's stable, that it's production ready. 
and people need to plan for switching to it because okay. the benefits are really big and uh, you know every big players every big website in the world uh, has moved already to HP2 exactly because it yeah. is so much more efficient that their you know their rendering times their businesses is benefiting from this so great well thank you so for uh, for the message it's for been the a pleasure for the information and um, good luck with the session this afternoon thank you thank you thank you so much for joining us. bye